one. That's good. Here we go. And so it went around for a moment. You guys kind of saw that. Tighten that up a little bit. And you guys can see, let me let me turn that around. You can kind of see the meat just kind of working around in a circle in the bowl. You guys see that? That just sounds ho so horrible. I want to make sure that there's nothing kind of like stuck in there. It's looking like ground meat, okay? Can you guys see that okay? A little bit of pepper on top. I'll knock that down in there. And I'm going to kind of loosen things up. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add an egg white to this thing. And that is going to help us create a little bit of air in this product. Okay, remember we said a mousseline is aerated. So I'm going to go ahead and separate out an egg white. I don't, I'm not going to use the yolk. And the white is going to foam much better if there's no yolk present, okay? The yolk kind of keeps it from foaming. Fat keeps those from foaming. And we will do something else with that yolk later, believe you me. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna work this egg white in there and we're gonna kick this puppy back on and it's going to aerate a little bit, working around in there. It's all, I'm gonna smooth it out a few more times with a spatula. <laughs> You can see it. You can see it rolling around in there. As soon as I hit it with that liquid, it was started rolling around, and it's going to keep working around in there. And as the, the more this meat kind of works in there, the more the proteins kind of knit together. Okay, and that's what's going to kind of capture fat when I add fat in here. Now I just gave it a good scraping, and I'm going to give it another good run in the machine. And we're about done with our farce, I think. I don't need to uh, uh, stay in here for too long. Oh, geez, let me get it on here. There we go. Now, so it's just meat, salt, pepper, fat, okay? Uh, I'm sorry, meat, salt, and uh, pepper, and an egg white. Uh, I'm going to start adding the fat now. When I do, the fat in this is going to take the form of cream. So I'm using heavy cream, and if anybody has ever over whipped cream, we know what happens. It turns into butter. Cream does not like this machine. So once I start adding cream into this, what I'm doing really is upping fat content. If I taste this right now, it's going to be dry, okay? So I'm upping the fat content by adding the cream, uh, but I'm pulsing it in. Cream doesn't like this machine. So whenever you're doing cream, give it a good shake because that fat separates out. If you get a bottle of cream and it's got fat on top, shake it back in. It's, it didn't go bad. It's not bad. You can always kind of give it a little smell. Delicious, okay? And I'm going to get on in there. And I'm throwing in about an ounce and a half, maybe two ounces of cream here. And I'm just going to pulse it in. Okay? I'm going to get my uh, spatula. And I'm going to knock it around in there. And it's looking like a mousseline. Mousselines are usually kind of light in color. Air makes things lighter. And I'm getting it all blended up in there real good. And what I'm going to do next is we are going to make a little taste tester because this is all raw duck and everything. I don't really want to taste it, but I got to check the seasoning for it. So um, we're going to do a little taste tester here in a second. Oh, God, would you get on here? Oh, God. There we go. Pulse, pulse, pulse. And that's about all the mixing I want to do. I'm going to fold any extra cream in by hand. And there it is, your force meat, okay? It's looking good. It's stiff. It's not like liquid or anything. And again, uh, it was those two duck breasts. It was a little salt and pepper. It was a little, it was an egg white and uh, uh, about an, uh, two ounces of cream, maybe, okay? I might add a little more cream to this, but right now I'm gonna pull it out of the machine and get it onto my iced bowl, okay? I'm still on ice over here. And some of this cream is still not really quite worked in. And that made quite a lot, okay? And remember, this is gonna get that duck cell. It looks like hot dog right now. <laughs> when we make hot dogs, 
that's what it looks like. Hot dog. I won't go for all of this stuff. You guys get the idea. And I think I'm done with this machine. Whoop, whoop. Thank goodness, because I'm not fond of that machine. There's going to be a little cleanup uh, to do after this class, I will tell you. Uh, the mixture, I'm going to kind of spread it around on that cold surface, on that ice, because this stuff needs to be chilled at all times. So surface area is your friend. When I'm cooking, when I'm cooling, it's always my friend. The next thing I want to do is um, we're going to fold in our duck salad. And here that is. Here's the spoon I was using for duck cell that had some flavor on it. Here's all the duck cell itself. It's ice cold. We never want to work like hot stuff into a raw meat mixture like this. We just increase surface area a thousand fold or a billion fold by putting it in the machine and pureeing it. And bacteria can spread throughout this entire mixture like wildfire if it's at a warm temperature. So we never throw hot ingredients into something like that. Also, that's just against the first rule of force meat anyway, right? We never want our force meats to become warm. We always want them ice, ice cold so the fat doesn't separate out. So I'm just stirring in my mushroom mixture. That is duck breast, cream, egg white, and duck cell. Duck and duck cell. That was not intentional. A little bit wants to come out there. And there is my duck filling, okay? I'm probably not going to use all of this. Now, does it taste delicious? I don't know. This is crucial right here, okay? You don't know what this raw mixture tastes like. And so we have to do a taste tester on this. Normally what we'll do is um, cook it in the same way that you wanna cook the uh, finished dish, right? So I would be roasting a piece off. I've just got a little saute pan here. I'm just gonna get it hot. I'm gonna put a drop of fat in there. We're going to taste this thing, okay? As we taste this, super important. Here's a drop of fat. Boop. Super important. We're not just looking at seasoning here. It's not just about the salt. I also want to kind of get like a texture thing here, okay? An idea of the texture. Is this thing nice and, you know, kind of got a nice little rubbery-ish chew to it? Is it super rubbery? Is it falling apart in my mouth. So we're, we're checking the bind here. Is it holding together? And is it holding together well? And we're also checking to see if it's holding its moisture and fat content. So um, uh, that's that's the mouthfeel thing where, where you know, I want to make sure that it's not like just like mouthfuls of dry sand in my mouth, okay? And so we're checking seasoning, we're checking bind, and we're checking um, uh, that, that mouthfeel, okay? So I don't want to cook this, rock and roll this, okay? We generally keep do these force meats kind of a lower temperature. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get two spoons. And I'm going to make a quenelle, a little dumpling, okay? The first motion with this, I have two spoons here. The first motion is I take some of the mixture and I pull it out right up against the side of the bowl. So my first uh, uh, side is flat. And then I use the second spoon to cut into that. And then I just flattened off another side. And you can go back and forth with that to create kind of three-sided little quenelles, okay? So I thought I would show you that little two-spoon method. You can do that or you can just throw down a little hamburger, okay? But I've got just a little piece in the pan. And again, all we're doing is checking seasoning, bind, and mouthfeel. Da, 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 da. I've still got the skin kind of hanging out. We're going to start assembling. Let's see. I got 20 minutes. I think I can assemble this thing and have it all together and then say goodbye. Uh, later on, we're going to be um, checking out uh, uh, just the roasting technique, as I said. And I'm going to show you guys how to make a, a mashed potato. And I don't, I don't put funky stuff in there like milk and stuff like that. All my stuff I put in my mashed potatoes is bad, evil, naughty stuff. It's they're really, really good. And I just love mashed potatoes. It's just such a quick and easy dish. Uh, super, super simple to do. Anybody can make. Okay. So I wanted to talk about that. I'm going to turn my, uh, my little quenelle, okay, with a clean spoon. Oh dear. I'm cooking it a little too hot and heavy here. You want to do gentle because if you're doing hot and heavy, your sausage is going to squeeze all the moisture out and you don't really get a good read of it. So I'm just cooking it a little bit more. Ooh. 
little bit more. I'm going to start pulling things out for the next stage. I think I can kind of taste my uh, sausage at this point. It's going to be pretty hot. You guys just saw the skin and the breast that's all laid out. Okay, so I've got a little piece of quenelle here. Hmm. I like the mouthpiece, the mouthfeel already. It's a nice bind, it's not crumbly. Um, it's super, super moist, lots of moisture and everything. I'm gonna put in just one more pinch of salt. It's got a really big mushroom flavor and it's gonna really, really season up my duck too. I'm going, hold on, hold on. Hmm, it's really good. Let's do a little more pepper. And I'm also gonna do a little pepper on my duck breast over here. Cause here we go, this is it. Again, I'm just doing very simple flavors because this was complex enough today. I'm going very, very fine black pepper on the inside of this, not on the outside. I don't want the outside, I want the outside looking clean. Not like I dropped it on the beach. Okay, ah, oh, yeah. Um, I'm also gonna add a little more salt to my force meat. And I'm gonna add salt to this breast as well. I gotta season this stuff too. There's, there's about, you know, eight, half a pound of meat there with skin and everything. So plenty of salt there, plenty of salt in my, in my force meat over here. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up uh, stirring that in. Excellent. I just put some salt and pepper in here. It's nice and cold. Uh, the last thing I want to do is get a, a length of twine, butcher twine, and I can start assembly. This is coming together in just a minute. I can do this in uh, 15 minutes, easy. I hope. Okay. Let me back you guys off. As I said, I'm going to get a little bit of uh, butcher twine. Let's go over here. I'm just kind of, uh, I've never done this kind of a preparation in here, figuring it out. That's pretty good right there. That's pretty good. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll a, a, a line of sausage right up the center here, and we're going to kind of roll this all together and then tie it. Uh, for the tie, I need a piece of string long enough for the whole job. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that out. La, 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 la. Okay. A good long piece of string. Pretty good long piece of string. I don't know how long that is. I'm terrible with measuring, okay? But there's my string. And I like to start my string by just tying a loop in at the end. That's just me. Because then later on, if I want to hang it or something, and nothing's going to get past that loop later on when I try and tie this thing. Okay, so there's my first start. I'm going to be showing you the rolling butcher's tie. I think I kind of played with this in another class. I, I did it with a, uh, a towel, though. Now, the trick with this, it's really tempting to want to overfill this thing. Uh, so you don't want to do that. So you're just going to lay a little line of it. And let me kind of show you how I do this, that measuring thing, how I get this. When I'm grabbing the meat from my bowl, I'm just grabbing it again, like that quenelle up against the side of the bowl. And I'm just kind of creating a, one line of meat. And then I slap it down, one line. See what I mean? Okay, I don't need a piping bag to get this in there. I'm gonna do that again, okay? I go up against the edge of the bowl a couple times, kind of clean it up. And I'm just gonna lay down another rope of meat right there. So, you guys missed it. I just did a second one, okay? And I'll do that again. La la la, rope of meat, la la la. Now, as I tie this, it's gonna be go pushing meat in this direction, so I don't mind a little taper at the end there, okay? The rest of this farce, I'm gonna just kind of put in a container real quick. I don't think I'm gonna, well, no. I'm just gonna leave it out over here because I will have some excess at the end. Okay, so I've got a pretty even amount. Let me just kind of even that out a little more. I don't want to be tempted to put too much in here. By the way, you could just 
put any flavor you want in this thing. I could do, I could have done a Chinese duck version of this, right? Um, anything you want to do. Now, earlier I put plastic wrap down and that plastic wrap is gonna be our friend. I also have a lot of excess skin that I'll be trimming here. Um, and when I trim that, I'm just gonna use a pair of scissors for that because it's easy to do uh, uh, with what we have here, okay? So I've got one side here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my plastic wrap as my friend to kind of bring it on over the top to create that top seam and I'll lay it down again. And I'm going to kind of do the same on this side. Um, now, I think I am going to trim this skin on this side. It's just a little heavy right over here. It feels weird to use scissors on skin. I'm just saying it. And that's going to go in my stock pot too, or underneath this bird when I cook it. Now I'm going to kind of use that plastic wrap to help me lift this side. And I've got kind of a double layer on one end. And I'm using this plastic wrap to kind of help me out here. But I'm going to kind of change things up a little bit because I'm going to pull things towards myself a little on this tray. Let me loosen it. See how the plastic wrap is kind of helping me? Sorry, guys, I bumped my camera. But I can, now that I, because I have it on plastic wrap, I can pick this thing up and manipulate it, okay? So I'm moving it the uh, heavier end back towards me. And I'm going to kind of Fold these guys over a little better. Notice I've got a little bit of that meat in there. I'm going to fold that to the inside so it's nice and clean here. And this is the heavier side here. I'm going to go in this direction, I think. So what I want to do is I'm going to pull back on this plastic wrap a little bit, one third of it. And this is a trick that I do. Sometimes I'll cook these in like cheesecloth or something like that and poach them. But if I'm roasting them, I need to tie them. And so tying is a little bit tricky if it's just loose like this. So I use the plastic wrap to kind of help stabilize one end of this thing. So I'm folding one end over and I'm folding the other end. The plastic wrap is just gonna kind of hold this half of it while I'm working on this front end here, okay? Now, it was just skin at the end. So what I'm gonna do is just tie this off at the end with my uh, uh, twine that had the loop in the end. There's that initial loop I had. Okay, this first knot is just going to be a granny knot, nothing fancy, just goes underneath there. And notice how things are a little slippery. So sometimes that string, it can just slide right under there. And I'm just going to bring it over the top and I'm going to tie it into a granny knot. Like I said, nothing fancy here. And I'm going to trim that skin at the end when it's done. I wanted that excess skin. And notice I have a little excess loop at the end if I wanted to hang something. I do that a lot. Now, the running butcher's tie. I've got all of this string over on one side. I'm gonna put the string in the palm of my hand and I'm gonna turn my hand. It's facing directly away from me. I'm gonna turn my hand towards myself and then all the way around. I, I just made a complete loop. I pull it out and now that I have that loop, I can lo uh, loop that underneath this duck and create my first tie. I want to point out that my seam is on top now, and you're going to see a string running along this, running along that seam, and that's what I want. Now, the string is not running along the seam. The seam is really more kind of over here. So I want to kind of move that string over a little to kind of, like I said, run along that seam. So I'll kind of pull on it and tighten. This is not your standard butcher's tie. This is the tie most chefs use. I should call this a chef's tie, but it I usually heard it called the running butcher's tie. So there's my first tie. The next tie, I want it equidistant from the first. So I'm going to lay that uh, string in my hand again, a complete revolution. I'm looking at the time. I got about 10 minutes to finish this. So I'm going to start hustling up. And I do another tie. And I slide it. I try and get that string to follow the seam. You guys see? It is following our bottom here. I'm going to pull this plastic wrap down a little bit and I'm gonna do another twist, okay? In the palm of my hand, complete rotation. And we pull it tight, get it over on this side. Equidistant from the last one. And keep that string tight, or keep that string straight, I should say. I'm gonna tighten that a little more. There it is. Keeping that string pretty straight. Okay, I got off a little bit. There we go. 
Okay, by the way, we're looking at the bottom of it. I'm pulling that plastic wrap. You see how that plastic just kind of stabilized things for me, okay? I'm doing another rotation. You can start jamming on this a little bit. Pull on that side, tighten. String, uh, uh, the, the bind should be equidistant, right? I'm pulling the rest of this plastic off. I don't need it anymore. This is really, really soft. Another little twist and down. Tighten. And remember, it was taper, tapered down at this end. Now it's all full of product. I'm kind of evening things out. I just straightened the string again. It's running along the seam and I'm getting down to the end. I think there's just really one more tie at the end here and I'm gonna go the long way. And there it is, okay? And again, I'm gonna kind of trim this skin before it goes in the oven. But there's my final tie. I'm gonna go ahead and tie that all the way. And one more, nothing fancy here, just a little granny knot, if you will, if you know a granny knot. If you were in the granny scouts, they taught you that one. The granny scouts. Helping little boys cross the street is a good deed. All right, last tie, come on, buddy. Okay, the running chef's tie is what I call it, not the butcher's tie, okay? I'm gonna use my uh, scissors to trim my string at the end. I'm gonna trim that unsightly fat. And uh, I don't know about you, but in my house, kids fight over the nubby ends. <laughs> That's all going in my stock pot. And there is my finished duck stuffed I introduced duck cell to you. I broke down a chicken from the back. I completely boned out a, a chicken, a duck from PT Farms. Again, all natural. I'm gonna kind of clean while I talk. Um, uh, I made force meats. We introduced force meats to you and I made a mousseline type force meat. I will be doing other force meats in the future in different cl classes. Um, let's see, and I showed you that rolling butcher's tie or running butcher's tie and showed you how to kind of bind up uh, a duck a fully boned out duck into one piece. And uh, let me just say that I didn't turn this over. So this will be turned over and that's what she looks like. And that is the beautiful duck breast that you are seeing. I poked a bunch of holes in this thing so it should render fat out while it's roasting. Later on today, I will um, uh, go through roasting technique again with you guys. And again, mashed potatoes. Uh, if you are enjoying these classes, it, it, I know this one was pretty, pretty heavy stuff today. This is like French cookery, uh, a lot of technique today, right? But you know, it's not like you're going to do this dish, but you could use that duck cell for something else, or it's not like you're going to make this dish or you could, but you could use that idea of a force meat really quick with a little bit of cream and an egg, egg white in a, in a, 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 a food processor with chicken breast. You can use it with fish, shrimp, scallop mousses, like all of those things. Those mousselinis are super, are your quickest easiest little force meat that you can crank out and and stuff something with okay so um that's what i wanted to show you today okay later on we're gonna roast we're gonna potato and all of that stuff if you are loving this stuff don't forget to get over to my facebook page and or i'm sorry my youtube page find my channel just subscribe the heck out of it man i gotta i gotta drive some viewership over there um but otherwise man uh, you guys are out there cooking it's memorial day drop some pics on my uh, industry cooking classes uh, uh, group page, guys. We started that group page just recently. People are sharing a bunch of cool stuff. I'm really, really digging it. And I'm digging the back and forth. I want to see my other chef instructor buddies out there too, dropping some knowledge on that page too, guys. Let's do this. Um, this guy's going to go in the fridge uh, until later today, okay? And then we are going to be roasting him off. Let me show it to you again. And there she is, okay? Maybe a little thicker in the beginning. I'm just kind of evening that out, right? It's looking a little tighter now. Oh gosh, there she is. There she is, come on now. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, let's see if anybody's still out there saying hi, saying bye. Uh, let's see, Monica, thanks for coming. 
Let's see, Diana, Joey Titherton, you are out there. Good to see you, Diana. That's about all I see right now. Uh, again, don't forget to cook, guys. It's the only thing we got going for us during these quarantine times. I hope you're enjoying these classes, and we are going to have more for you tonight, okay? It's going to be good stuff. Also, don't forget to stop by on Wednesday. Going to be uh, uh, going to be interviewing Bill No from Crew. I'm so excited about this. So uh, see you then. Uh, see you at 4 o'clock tonight. That's when I'm going to see you, okay? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Quarantine Kitchen. Quarantine kitchen happy hour. The party is always in the kitchen.